you brothers uh, <coughs> know and you remember according to what we said in the previous session, uh, we as human beings, we have been created for Quran says we created man and gene for worship. And uh, we said that Ibadah is an action, if you remember. And we said that action cannot be the ultimate goal. Always you do action to reach to a state. If you remember, we brought the example of eating. Why do you eat? Why do you cook? You cook for eating. So the purpose of cooking is eating. But still eating is an act. It cannot be the ultimate goal for you. What is the purpose of eating? To have a state of being full and then you are not in the state of hunger. Then you have energy. That, that ease and pleasure that you receive out of, being, out of eating is the purpose of eating. So always bear in mind, this is very important, always Actions cannot be ultimate goal. There is a state behind all actions that man decides to do. And Quran says, So the purpose of ibadah says, we created man for ibadah. And in other places, do worship, then you will receive a certainty. So the purpose of ibadah is, Ibadah is an act itself is not the ultimate goal. When you receive certainty, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nafsul mutma'inna, ya ayyuhal nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan marziya, fadkhuli fi ibadi. It's being abd, being servant of Allah. Being servant of Allah might be a little bit confusing for us because we just bear in mind being servant of people and be be being servant of people is not something good, it's not anything uh, eye-catching, it's not something that you wish to be. But uh, because there is no other term, because when you are servant of people, you are servant to solve, to serve them, to prepare them with their needs. But there is no need for Allah. So when you are a servant of Allah, in fact, you are getting close to achieve. That's the difference. So the concept and identity of being servant is different. It's a kind of metaphor. It's a kind of analogy because people knew the concept of servant and slave, meaning that you have you have responsibilities to do, and you have to listen. You have to obey. Then they have brought the concept of servant. But quite different. It is not a servant in a sense that we see servants among people. So it's an achievement. It's a great position. You cannot achieve anything higher than being a servant. You are the, kingest of, the, the king of the king mm -hmm. if you are a servant of Allah. So this is achieving. <coughs> so the point is that <clears throat> All these things, being servant, fi ibadi, jannah. This is to enter the paradise, jannah. You are going to enjoy it. What is uh, usually understood is that uh, people are of two kinds: religious and non-religious. Religious people are free to enjoy. And, non and religious people know they have limitations, they cannot enjoy, they have to deprive themselves from the pleasures. Then when they die, there is a good uh, tiding for them and they are waiting for good things to happen. But this is not correct. All human beings in this creation, the ultimate goal that they have is to run from the difficulties, hardships, sorrows, sadness, towards happiness. All are looking for happiness. Yeah, they might differ in the way that they look for happiness. They might have different understandings of happiness. One of the kings, it has been mentioned in the story that 
one Iranian king, he heard that there are a group of people in India, when a, a relative dies, they, they burn the body and then they eat some parts of the body. <coughs> Again, in some other places, there are people that when their relatives are died, they bury them. <coughs> so he said, bring up these two groups to me. They brought an Indian and they said, uh, he said to them, to him, uh, why do you eat from the flesh of your father when he dies? He said, because then I eat the flesh, my father is going to, is not going to perish. His flesh enters into my being and he will exist as long as I exist. Then my son will eat from me, and my grandson from my son, then we will continue living. And he said, how much if I give you, you are ready to bury your father instead of burying an Indian? He said, no. No, 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 we cannot do it at any price. Then he asked <coughs> the other guy, he said, how much can I give you to cook your father and eat from him? This is when he is dead. Again, the same answer that we cannot do that. No price. So you see, the point is that both like their fathers, both respect the father, both are ready to sacrifice, no, not to receive any price for respecting, for disrespecting the father, but in two quite opposite ways. So both have the same concept in the mind, that this way I respect my father. But in action, quite opposite to each other. This is a simple example to bear in mind that people look for things, but it may show it in different ways. So don't think that the person who is eating the flesh of the father is a bad person, evil person, doesn't like his father. And the one who is not ready to eat, an Indian shouldn't think that, oh, these people, they don't like their fathers. They just bury the father without eating the flesh. This is wrong to judge people this way. In some countries, when you go, when they bring food to you, if you eat all the food, it is disrespected. Disrespectful, yeah. In some countries, if you do not eat all the food, it is considered to be bad. If you eat all the food in some countries, if you eat all the food, it means that the food was not enough. Still, I'm hungry. Your food was not enough for me. So the, the host may feel sort of ashamed. So better to leave some part of the food in the plate, meaning that I am full and your food was enough, delicious. But in some countries, if you do not eat all the food, it means that it was not delicious, so I couldn't eat all the food. So you have to bear in mind which culture you are dealing with. In some cultures you have to eat all, in some cultures you shouldn't eat all. But in both, in both, the point is that you are respecting the host. The same respect, but different form of manifestations. When it comes to uh, pleasures, the same story. All people are looking for pleasures but it may manifest itself in different ways. One basic rule is that we all live in hardship. This is the nature of the world. You cannot run from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Balad, verse 4, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَد We created man in hardship. We created man in trivials. You cannot run from the hardship. This is the nature of the world. You do so many things just to eat, Salam alaikum. But eating has many problems before and after. Whatever you do to achieve some sort of pleasures, there are problems before and after. One of the sweetest, greatest pleasures in the world is to have baby, to have a child. 
and you feel farther, it's so delicious, it's so nice, so pleasing. But at the same time, there are so many problems with it. Before and after. So you cannot find, I mean, when you're talking about the pleasures, even the pleasures are surrounded by hardships and difficulties, let alone the hardships. This is the nature of the world. So all people, even the ones that you think they are so happy, they are not happy in reality. They might, are not necessarily, but it's not necessary to think that the person has a good cause, so they are happy. Many times, you know, people pretend to be happy. Because they are not happy, this is psychologically is proven that the couples you see that in front of people, they pretend that they love each other, they kiss each other. These are the ones that they have problem in the family, in, in their house. There is a kind of mechanism in the mind that when you do not have something, when you, there is someone lacking, you try to show off with that in public before others because you're suffering from that. Those people who are mean inside, they try to show arrogance and so, some sort of showing off in before people. A person who is great inside doesn't feel that much need to show off. To whom I want to prove myself, I am great. But the person who is mean always trying to show off because he feels small inside. <clears throat> that is the nature of man. So hardships are there. You know, as a religious uh, scholar, you know, in my country, you know, other places are so, we are somehow that people trust us. So when they trust us, they come and speak about their problems to find a kind of solution, they consult us. The things that they cannot say even to their brother, to their father, they tell him as a sheikh, as a religious scholar. I have so many experiences of these issues that a person that people consider to be so happy, to be so happy, when they talk about it, you see that he is living in hell. A person who was so rich, the richest person in his family, he was telling me that it is three months that I have broken up with my wife, so we, we don't speak. You know, when you don't speak with your wife and you're living on the same it's like a hell. It's like a hell. But people seeing them say, oh, good for them. What a happy person is he. Good car, good house. So happiness and pleasure is not something that you can judge it by the surface. The point is that all people are living in hardships. This is the nature of the world. Nobody can run from it. I have seen so many rich people that they cannot eat normal food suffering from diabetes, from different problems, that they can eat so simple sort of food that the body can digest. They have the big money, but they cannot enjoy it. And also I have seen poor people that enjoy eating a loaf of bread. I don't want to say being poor is good, no at all. The concept is not that being poor is good and being rich is bad. I'm not saying this, not at all. The point is that it is not necessarily that poor people or those who are deprived of some things, they suffer, and those who are rich, they are happy. That is the point. So all human beings are, this is the nature of the world, that all, they have sufferings and they look for happiness and there is no exception. All look for happiness, and that is why we have been created. That is why we are looking for a kind of religious life. So what is important is to find out the concept of happiness. What is happiness? So it, 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 what makes you happy matters. What makes you happy matters. Imagine you have been invited to a very luxurious feast. Very high class people are going there. And you, when you reach to the gate of the saloon, you see that there is some food uh, that is dropped before the door. You sit and begin eating it. 
know what, what people judge about you. You have been invited to the feast, the best of the foods were being served there with respect on the tables. There were servants to bring the food to you, but you are sitting at the door and eating from the dirty food. This is the story of so many people who enjoy these cheap things and they think that they are happy and the religious people are not happy. They don't take pleasures. We all look for pleasures. But what do, how do you define pleasures? How do you define enjoying? This, is ma this matters. For a person like Imam Zain al-Abidin, he says, Allahi astaghfiruka min kull lazzatin bighayr dhikrik. Oh Allah, I repent to you from any pleasure that I received except in your name. So the pleasure was in your name. In calling your name, this was the greatest pleasure. Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi no, because Imam Khomeini usually is known as a political leader. But if it, even before being a, a leader, he is a great mystic, Arif. His point, Irfani point, mystical point of very, very unique. And his books in Irfan are very unique. And he has a saying in this regard, he says, you, you cannot do true ibadah, you cannot do true salat without enjoying it. So as long as you don't enjoy salat, you're not performing salat. As long as you don't enjoy these names of Allah, you are not doing dhikr. The reality of dhikr is to reach, to, to get into the feast. Don't sit at the door. Those people who are not trained just sit at the door and enjoy food, enjoy women, enjoy these simple things that are there at the door of creation. They don't let themselves to enter into the feast. So if, if Allah says رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ to reach ma'rifah, the, the pleasure in ma'rifah is much more greater than the pleasure in food or in I don't know, whatever that you can imagine. Even the donkeys, the monkeys, they can enjoy the pleasure of this eating banana, eating the fruits. They, they know what is sweet, what is, what is not sweet. This is not a kind of very high level of pleasure. This is other animals can understand it. But you were invited to a feast. And you're supposed to enjoy things that others cannot enjoy. At the same time that we do not deprive ourselves from the pleasures that they have. We eat from the foods, we, eat, we, we have halal pleasures, all the halal pleasures are there. There are few pleasures that, like for example, drinking. We, we, did, we, we don't go towards. Drinking that is a pleasure with so many problems with it. Even you see this country is not a religious country. The government is not a religious. But at this time they put ban on, on alcohol because of the problems that it causes. Because of the consequences it has. Now it's clear that it hurts your brain, it hurts your kidneys, it hurts your liver, your stomach, your brain, everything. So, we look for pleasure, but at which price, at what price? Though the people who are inclined towards drugs, they get a pleasure out of it, no doubt. And we know they, they take pleasures. Everybody knows that they enjoy it. But why are you not going to test it? But because we know that, yeah, there is enjoyment, but with so many problems to come after that. That's why we choose not to use the drugs. And you see that those, even those who take the drugs, they are not happy. After a while, they are not happy. They know that they have so many problems, but they cannot resist. Sometimes they can do, many of them they cannot. So it's a matter of, this is very important, the golden key, that the life is the management of happiness, pleasures, and sorrows. And even religion comes for this, to teach you how to manage the pleasures and how to manage the hardships and sorrows and difficulties. The pleasures that, 
the spiritual ones because they are not physical, they are not limited. When something becomes spiritual, then there is no limit for it because your soul is not limited. I talked about it in the class. We are with the brothers anthropology. And this one of the strange things with human beings is that whatever you struggle for, whatever you achieve after achieving it, we see that you were not looking for that. If you go to the president and say, are you happy about being a president? When he wakes up in the morning, it's very, very awful normal for him. If, if they tell you, you know, after a month, you are going to be the president. Not the president, you are going to be governor of Johnsburg. Wow, what a great team. You can only sleep at night. But look, go to the governor and ask him, are you so happy? He will say something. He, he, he likes to be president. He doesn't like being governor. And the, and the president is not that much happy. There are so many stresses, distresses, problems. And even if there is no problems, it becomes ordinary for them. This is the nature of this world, that whatever you struggle for, whatever you achieve, you see that it is less than what you imagined. It is not what you considered it to be. Dreaming for it was much more sweet than achieving it. Why? Because you, you are not about to sit at the gate. You have to enter the feast. You have to enter the feast. The pleasures are waiting for you there. When Imam, as, Imam Zain Allah says, Elahi astaghfiruka min kulli lazzatin bighayr dhikrih, means when I receive these high level of pleasures, so how could I be happy with these no, small ones? You are 20 years old now. Go home. If you find the shoes that you used to wear when you were five, you kill yourself if you cannot wear them. You have been grown. Your feet are bigger than a five-year-old child. You cannot wear them even you kill yourself. Then you cannot enjoy those you know, simple things that those people enjoy on the street. Not because you are deprived yourself from those pleasures. Then it doesn't make a sense to you. It is so cheap, it is so small. When you receive those great pleasures. Ayatollah Nejabat is one of the mystics that was contemporary. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. At the same time, the Ayatollah Bahjad and those people, they were a generation of you know, mystics. They were all brought by Sayyid Ali Awaqa, Ziyad Abu Tawai, Rahmatullah Alayhi. They were one of the great mystics. He is the Ayatollah Ghazi, he is the, also the master of Dua Allah, Abu Tawai, Rahmatullah Alayhi. All these unique people. Ayatollah Nijarat says, I went to Abay Qazi and saw him upset. Just imagine what, what is their world and what is our world. He said that I went to Ayatollah Qadim and I saw him so upset. I said, what's the matter, Mulana? Why you're upset? He said uh, something for several days has occupied my mind and I'm unhappy about it. I said, what's right, what's the matter? You know, Abay Ghazi was a poor person. He was not a rich person. He had so many financial problems. What, what is his mind occupation? He says that if, I, I'm thinking for a while that if he die, and if we go to Jannah, if there they don't let us to perform Salah, then what could we do? What could we enjoy there? The food, rivers of honey, milk, women, these are the things the Quran mentions. Are we pl are going to play these things, enjoy these things? They are not pleasing for our Qazi. He says, if they don't let us to perform Salah, what should we do there? What could be the pleasure for us there? That's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about the pleasures in Jannah, says, Akbar. And the, 
pleasure of Allah with you is greater and greatest than any other pleasure that you can imagine in Jannah. When Allah is pleased with you. You know, as a father, you like to do so many things that your child is happy with you. To, to buy a toy, you know, when you go home, the child makes, is happy. When you love your wife, you, you do things for wife to make it happy. And when you see Allah is happy with you, what is the pleasure? You don't understand. Because you are not of that level. So the pleasures that I said we don't, as religious people, we are not going to deprive ourselves from almost all the pleasures they have. Almost the ones that even they confess that is problematic, like drink. Something that makes you to lose your intellect. There were cases that men who killed their wives because they were drunk, out of control. So it, it makes you to lose your intellect, your wisdom. This is not nice. As a wise person, you don't do that. But the rest of the, the material pleasures, we also take them. But we don't satisfy ourselves with them. That is the point. We go beyond these pleasures. We want something more. I recite the poem. Sharibna ala dhikr al-habib mudamatan wa sakarna biha min qabla ay yukhlaq al-karm. We were drunk in the name of our beloved one before the wine, before the grape to be created. At the time that there was no grape, that this art is saying the time that there was no grape, there was nothing to be created as grape. Then later to, to the wine to come, we were drunk, but not from these wines. Quran says, Masaqahum, Rabbuhum, Sharaban, Tahura. Allah makes them drink from a purified wine. And Imam Sadr alayhi salam said, it's a wine that makes you free from anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will happen in this dunya. You can drink from that wine in this dunya. Inshallah, and we'll talk more on this. This is only the uh, uh, introduction to our discussion. We'll talk more on this, inshallah, in the coming session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.